next, drugs and rock and roll. Three subjects in my pipe dream of becoming a mom I never thought about having to address. Sex. Oh, yuck. <laughs> I don't know anybody who wants to discuss that with their children. Um, I think there was a part of me that hoped there was some sort of, in our case, a special sex education class that they would teach that to my kids and I certainly wouldn't have to but truth be told I I'll answer those questions if and when they come up I uh, cross my fingers toes eyes and nose that they don't but they they do and if and when they they will inevitably I'll certainly address those subjects or questions I, I should say rock and roll I don't think anybody should influence other people's opinion of what's good music, although my kids both have terrible taste in music. Fortunately for me, they both have the music going into their ears with uh, their high, high-tech high hearing aids, so it goes into their Bluetooth, and I have to subject myself to their terrible taste in music. Drugs drugs that subject came up a lot earlier than I ever anticipated again I didn't really ever think about having to have that that talk with my kids or crossing that bridge in my pipe te- pipe dream of parenting it just wasn't something we'd ever have to address uh it I had to address that one a lot earlier on in particular the the idea of what marijuana is or what weed is and we in our house call weed adult chicken i'm nikki lynn chase this is my podcast also called adult chicken for that reason and it's about our journey navigating life's unexpected with two special needs children as a single mom i sheltered myself from drugs when i was a kid so in junior high school i I actually was very naive too. I didn't even know really much about it or anything about it. I didn't know kids were doing it at that point. Um, Got to high school, knew it existed, was just not a thing. It was not around it. I didn't, no, that's not true. I was around it. I just was very oblivious, I think. I I just, it was never something I attempted. I drank um, alcohol. I wasn't a a perfect kid by any means, but I just didn't get into the whole idea of drugs or I wasn't interested. So I end up at school in Boulder, Colorado. And that was, of course, back in the day when weed was far from being legal and everybody I knew smoked weed. And so I thought I'd kind of get into it. You know, what could go wrong? It's a natural thing. And seemed perfectly harmless and a friend of ours uh made some a batch of pop brownies and i just couldn't get really into the idea of smoking it but gosh i could eat a plate of or pan of brownies heck yeah there's no monitoring what go, like nowadays at least they monitor what goes in there kind of what strain as far as i know and not not back in the the late 90s <laughs> mid 90s late 90s so we get into the batch of brownies and again no one's monitoring what is in them as far as how much and the strain no one's certainly monitoring how much we eat and it was one of those time I had no idea what I was doing so I don't feel anything so I don't know half quarter of a pan of brownies later well it kicks in and and you know you're high when you're in boulder colorado the weed capital of the world (laughs) you go to the circle k and you're not only eating i'm talking about myself you're not only eating the hot dogs off the spinning thing and putting them back you take a little nibble out of each one and set them back on the rolling deal But then the employee, the guy that works at Circle K, looks at you and your friend and says, Whoa, someone's high in here. (laughs) And I remember, I think it was that night or maybe the early morning hours of that 
uh, experience that both my friend and I thought we were going to be high for the rest of our lives. And that kind of made me not need to keep getting into the weed. So a little later into my college career, a little closer to, to my being done, I discovered mushrooms one night and we were I think at a party or something get together and the mushrooms came out again I thought well what what harm this will be fun natural I was wasn't a hippie but you know we I was amongst some of the best of them and not real ones for the most part but people that really believed in the natural thing and I thought give mushrooms a try and I did and I had a blast but all I wanted to do was go grocery shopping I loved I remember I loved the aisle with the cereal uh, boxes that was my favorite thing that particular night and I I think it took about three people to drag me out of the grocery store because I just wanted to look at the cereal boxes so I think I realized those drugs I know they're not harsh and at this point they're pretty much legal weed certainly is I think uh shrooms are making their way into legal but I figured drugs really weren't for me I didn't I could go grocery shopping without having mushrooms in me almost be as enamored with the cereal section and uh weed again that just I just never wanted to feel that feeling again so Years later, I'm living in the mountains, and at the end of the the ski season, uh, at the time I was snowboarding, of course, and there was something called BB&B, and that was uh, beers, boobs, and boomers, boomers being mushrooms. I thought, I, you know, I'm going to give this a, another try. Why not? You know, I'm in the mountains. That's what this party is about. It's about beers, which I was drinking my fair share of, and boomers, boobs, got those. And we'll just, we'll just enjoy the fun, enjoy what this is about. I didn't quite know my commitment when I took that big, or when I ate the big stem of mushrooms and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I'm not going to lie, but for four hours on the mountain, strapped into a snowboard, I made people call me Carl. (laughs) And after that experience, after only answering to the name Carl, I have no idea where it came from. I don't and didn't know anybody named Carl. It just, it was, it was just what I did and I thought I just don't think I think table the attempt at becoming you know or having a relationship with drugs I guess so years later I become a mom never even think about having a conversation about this I don't think I maybe people do maybe people think about how they're going to approach these different things I certainly didn't I didn't think about anything that had to do with my future with kids and then once I had them and went through their all the craziness of them being infants and whatnot. It just, it became a real Carpadium parenting style I took on, just live in the moment. Again, I didn't know how many moments we were going to have. Right? The future was something I just didn't cross the bridge of very often, if ever, with our particular situation. So when we did end up, myself and the two kids ended up in the state of Washington, and again, when we located there, we didn't have a car. So our radius of friends and people we would hang out with were just in the surrounding area, neighbors, if you will. It, it, we didn't hang out with many people, but our one neighbor in particular, again, le- weed was not we legal at the time. And we'd gone to her house, but she always had it. And she was always cooking um, or baking with medicinal that's what weed was always called in the day that it was not legal it was medicinal and so she was she had sort of a medicinal weed operation and get to her house and it was so abundantly fragrant with the smell of chocolate chip cookies now I could smell the weed I happen to love the smell of weed and I could smell it in the baking but the kids were not familiar with that smell 
and didn't know, but they definitely recognized the smell of cookies. So we get into her house and they immediately run to the kitchen and Bootsy goes to grab a cookie, just not even, th- you know, she's what, like six at the time and she just goes to grab a cookie and I smack it out of her hand. It was like slow motion where I just whack it out of her hand. I said, Bootsy, no, that's an adult cookie. And so after that experience, I realized, oh, I've got to explain this to her because didn't make any sense. There was a cookie and then I'm calling it an adult cookie. So immediately the lesson, the, the, the learning lesson there was that I explained you have to be an adult for certain things. So anything she ever puts in her mouth and Sandler too, of course, anything they put in their mouth needs to be approved by me. I think I realized immediately how quickly they could accidentally digest something or get something in their mouth. But I adult cookie was the term and kind of adult cookie ended up being what drugs were adult beverages, of course, not that I pioneered that term, but that is what adult adult things were not something you put in your mouth was the lesson I taught the kids. And adult meant 21 until more recently where as they approach 21 so quickly, we've moved it up to 35. So we relocate our our dare and scare program, if you will, to Southern California. This is about a year after they had really gotten the the bejesus scared out of them about a, an adult cookie, and it was in the it was in the rearview mirror. wasn't thinking about it. And we get to California, where, of course, everybody's outside, and we've got the beach vibe and. Marijuana is in abundance. I mean, everyone's smoking it, or at least we're we're a lot more in tune because we're outside and we're amongst the people who just, I think, more freely or just openly because just because we're outside and we're not in the rain anymore. And so there's lots of weed going on. And at one one point, we're walking by a neighbor's house, and he was he would always smoke weed while he would cook. And Bootsy stops dead in her tracks, and she says, "Mommy." And she sniffs a couple times and she said, I smell adult chicken. And I, I had a moment, I paused and I, first I laughed and I barrel left and I said, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Adult chicken, because she had put it, he clearly wasn't baking and he was cooking something savory and it was an automatic to call it chicken. And then she used the adult from adult cookie and put it in front of chicken and i thought oh my gosh what a what a moment what a profound incredible moment like she just put those two together from something so long ago to the present and it was it was incredible because it meant that she really had connected the dots and she'd put you know really understood what i had what i had said and what i had explained and in a, a lesson i'd given both kids you know, about a year, a year before. So it became known as adult chicken. And then we were, we kind of, since it was, you know, something we would come across quite often, it was great because nobody knew what we were talking about. And I could, in my own way, not offend people and say, "Mm, adult chicken. And so that we were all aware of what it meant amongst the three of us. And so we end up relocating and living next to some some kids. And now I say kids, they were probably mid mid to late twenties. And it was funny because they had this ginormous smoker and they'd constantly have barbecues and fraternize with their their friends and always have gatherings, but they'd always be smoking wheat. And so it made perfect sense that they'd be grilling, cooking, smoking meat or whatever and yet there'd be a strong odor of marijuana so when my kids they they were enamored by these young people that were just having the time of their lives in their in their yard and one of the very early uh parties that they kind of threw Sandler's just over there really studying what's going on and then he calls the kids out and he said, why are you smoking adult chicken? Now, 
it was very funny, but the neighbors having no idea, of course, what adult chicken is, are very confused by it. Now, I fortunately had, (laughs) being the mother of the kids that make things incredibly awkward, I had the luxury of kind of just playing the, oh, I know a lot of times what they say doesn't make sense. Uh, as it wouldn't adult chicken that made no sense to them but I mean essentially because I'd made it such a terrible thing and naughty thing Sandler was kind of tattletailing on him and he, he was doing it to his face and really inquiring like why would you do adult chicken you know my mommy said that she would stop talking to us kick us out of the house and we'd become homeless and then die if we ever did it so I realized at that point it was time to really maybe revisit the the subject and soften it a little bit because I couldn't let them think that everybody was just an absolute heathen. And of course, getting closer, it might have even been legal at that point. But I thought you need to you need to be careful because you completely have railroaded anybody <laughs> who smokes it. And I have no problem with people who who do or that's that's their thing. And I thought you need to sort of loosen up the the tightness on this this subject, but also keep it so that you know their their bubble of innocence doesn't expand and think that we need to sort of I guess not to encourage the behavior and that it is okay for for some. So I kind of explained, you know, I kind of went back down the the medicinal route and said, you know, some people, a lot of people need it and do it. It's got medical benefits. It's not something that we need or we're going to do or experiment with, but we had, we addressed it again. And I figured they kind of understood, but there was definitely an air of harshness I kept in there so that they knew it was not something that they needed to ever try or do. So I had given up. I had decided to quit drinking. I figured my my kids and my life with my kids sort of required a a fatal amount of alcohol, beer and wine. And so it just I didn't like how it was making me feel. I did I felt like it was making me really unhealthy and just not not what I wanted to do. So I cut that out of my life. But we had gotten to a summertime and it was stressful. You know, kids are out of school and there's just so much going on and I needed something to calm me down. And somebody had suggested I go to a a dispensary. And so that was an experience. And I knew I didn't want to ever try edibles again after the the pan of brownies in in Boulder, I knew, and that feeling of, <laughs> God, that was horrible. So I knew I never wanted to try another edible. And so I decided to go to a dispensary. And I felt I'd spent so much time telling my kids how naughty and terrible and bad it was, talking them out of it. I felt like I was doing something very rebellious and wrong and naughty and I I mean I felt like I'd gone to a party or signed myself up for some weird weird deal and then they were so friendly there and they're offering what do you want it for and what you know they telling me about the different types and kinds and what it's good for so I get my I think I got two joints and they put it in a, a prescription pill deal or prescription container and I I get home and I think I was somewhat inspired by the the neighbor kids. They just seemed to always just be so relaxed and, <laughs> and joyful with their, while fraternizing with their friends. So I was really eager to like just see if this was like going to be my my new calling. I mean, nothing like taking up smoking weed at the ripe old age of mid mid forties. So early forties. So I waited for for nap time. My kids, yes, did take naps until. So kind of a, a late a late age, but they had gone down for their naps and I went outside and I put myself in a very secure, what I thought was secure hiding spot. And I locked myself outside. I was able to do that. So I'm I'm outside hiding, crouching down so no one can see me. And the next thing I hear, I, I take probably my first puff or two. And the next thing I hear 
I, I hear my neighbor and he's, I, I think he's walking his cat. And I, I didn't, I, I've never had cats. I didn't know if that was really a thing. I did, I guess I wasn't familiar with cat walking, but, um, and he was yelling at his cat or so I think he is not in a, not in a bad way, but just in a, a confusing way. So I start thinking, am I really high? Like, do people walk cats? I'm really trying to analyze the situation. And next thing is a car pulls up with a bunch of college age neighbor kids. And they get out of the car and they're like, dude, are you hot boxing? And I'm thinking, oh my God, the mother of the, the mother of the two kids, the neighbor woman that, I mean, kids go around stare at people and call them out on an adult chick like having no idea what adult chicken is just the weirdos next door that say weird random thoughts or whatever's on their mind and I'm thinking oh my god so the paranoia essentially had kicked in and I'm mortified and I'm thinking the whole neighborhood knows I'm smoking my my new joint that I got at the dispensary and next thing I know Bootsy has gotten herself in an impossible peering situation where I look in the wind like I can see her I don't even know how she got to where she was but there she was staring at me and I'd just been caught doing something I had forever ingrained in their head was a terrible awful thing to do so I came inside and I start crying and she starts crying Sandler of course awakes to the commotion of our emotional outburst of me being 40 something and getting caught smoking weed by my kid (laughs) so we had another sit down and I had to explain that I went to a reputable quote unquote location and purchased my medicinal marijuana and I gave it a try and I wouldn't probably ever do it again I didn't want to it was not enjoyable it was the worst experience I'd had to date with freaking weed so we we dialed that in and I really toned it down and it and explained you know it's it's not the worst thing in the world and again there are people that need it benefit from it I'm not going to be one of those people you don't have to worry and we and we moved on so adult chicken represents my kids amazing ability to learn their capacity to understand difficult topics and put them together for me it also represents the fact that I get the the gift of creatively teaching them and educating them on those topics and I can put my own spin on how it's going to be worded and said and they're going to understand it and forever and always weed will forever be called adult chicken in our house today's special edition is a story about adult chicken of course we were leaving the skate park this was just a couple years ago and it was around christmas time and we ran into a kid and he was a kid he was way too young to be as stoned as he was but he was high and it was a friend of ours or friend of Sandler's that see at the skate park and he comes up to us and I mean the the kid can't even open his eyes barely and he's like Sandler how you doing what what are you what are you asking for for Christmas this year and I'm getting nervous and I'm thinking, oh, you're not going to be the guy that blows the magic of Christmas and blows Santa Claus out the gate for us here, guy. Like, stop. And Sandler's picking up on the the stony vibe and he's not liking it and it's making him really uncomfortable. And I, I kind of step in and say, hey, you're going to have to ask Santa Claus. Like, Santa knows what Sandler wants, but, you know, that's between him and Santa. And the kid just starts running his mouth and oh, he's too, he's too big, he's too old to believe in Santa. And again, I'm thinking, it's not going to be you, dude. Like, you're not going to be the guy that, like, takes this, this magic out of, out of our house. So Sandler excuses himself and goes to the bathroom, and I kind of hurry him out of the, out of the, the parking lot, and he's in the car, and he just starts to 
ball and he has he hates to show his emotion but he has no control over them so he's just trying so hard to get a hold of himself and I said you know what I tell you what distraction always works best best I think with all kids but with my kids in particular in particular it is distraction and I try to do my best to think quickly get them distracted so we get in the car and I go grab a pizza and I'm like we're gonna drive around and look at uh Christmas lights and we do and they were beautiful and they were amazing and we're having a great time and Sandler starts making the connection that you know a lot of people don't have Christmas lights on and I had at this time explained to him as we went to get the pizza I said you know I bet I bet your buddy's just jealous I said I bet he's jealous that Santa still comes to see you I said when you do weed or you do drugs you Santa doesn't come visit you like that's naughty and he knows what you're doing and I of course probably maybe shouldn't have continued with the story but I did and as we're driving around the neighborhoods he starts making the connection that anybody who doesn't have their house decorated or have lights up must use adult chicken And at first I thought that was funny and I thought it was clever. And I thought, wow, you know, like kind of another profound moment of like, wow, way to connect the dots. You know, you're right. I bet they don't. I kind of get into it for a minute and then we get closer to our house and one of the homes right next to us, he starts realizing, wait a minute, they didn't decorate for Christmas. They must do adult chicken. Well, was a couple that I certainly wouldn't want my children to to judge terribly. And I was like, oh shit, sorry, no. And then I once again had to backpedal and explain to them both that not everybody celebrates Christmas, which opened up a a, a wonderful door of a, another teaching moment in regard to people who don't celebrate Christmas or who don't bother or want to decorate and sort of the hassle of that. Again, I think it led us into another um, moment of learning things. But I guess, I guess the lesson I learned was I do need to always be very, very careful about how far I take things and how much joy I get out of how we creatively <laughs> navigate things <laughs> in life situations. But to this day, we didn't let that kid take down our idea of of Christmas magic and how how it all works and it was a really good a good season to learn to say no